Hey, 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 pig, pig, good listener, pig, 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 pig. That's how much they pay attention when there's food around. Yeah, that's my mini pig. Super mini. You guys ready to do an episode? Let's do an episode. Pig, pig, turn around for a second. Piggy, piggy, there's nothing left. There's nothing, there's nothing left. I know there's nothing left. I can see it. What are you searching for? Can you come here for a second? Can you, hey, God bless. You're so gross, you're so gross. Where are you going? Yeah. So much for an intro, boom. So I don't waste 10 minutes of everybody's time talking about nothing. This is just a rescue situation. All these animals belong to somebody that couldn't take care of these animals and had the heart enough to realize that the animal stores were pretty much going downhill. He had a bunch of deaths. He had things that were dying. He had things that were sick. He couldn't figure out how to feed things. He couldn't get the equipment. He couldn't get the help he needed. Basically, somebody told him he was going to be able to do this a couple hours a week is all it was going to take. 
which is a straight up lie. It takes me 18 hours a day, pretty much every single day, with the exception of maybe I'll get to go surf every once in a while if I work hard enough and late enough. So the dream that he was sold was a false one. And at the end of the day, he just cared about the animals. So we're just making sure that everybody's good until we can figure out a better situation for everybody here. But a lot of the stuff here is you got ball pythons, corn snakes, king snakes, California king snakes, border king snakes, there's a trans pecos rat snakes in there, some emery rat snakes, and I think that's pretty much it, plus the bearded dragons. A few odds and some geckos I'll show you in a second. But the guy couldn't take care of that stuff, and everybody gets sold that dream that this is easy work. And as fun as it is, it gets to be where it's a little bit draining. It's just a lot. It becomes a lot. And the guy could realize, at least, that the animals were suffering for it. He just wants the animals to be okay. So that's it, period, end of story. Um, these guys will go to different homes later on here in the future. You'll see in a couple of months. Uh, I had a lot of people asking a lot of questions about that. So that's where we are with all of that. So, just basically me dumping tons of money into a situation to help a bunch of animals. That's pretty usual story of my life. All right, so to the bearded dragons now. Since there is a bunch, believe it or not, when I did a lot of importing and exporting and breeding for myself, I bred the shit out of some bearded dragons. Like way more than I ever even thought possible. Way more than I ever even wanted. The first year I had produced 4,500 baby bearded dragons. It was the most miserable experience of my life. So we were basically going through about 40,000 crickets a week. And on top of that, it was wall to wall to wall to wall to wall bearded dragons. The thing about these guys is very simple. They will eat each other. Not fully, but they'll take little pieces of body parts. You'll see nip tails, you'll see uh, little feet and stuff. This guy's got a little nip tail. It looks like he's got a little piece of his missing. But that's what we keep from happening. So basically what I was gonna do today, I can't do, if you look behind you, I have another tank. Right, that tank. There you go, genius. So I have another tank sitting on the floor. I had, I was gonna go ahead and separate because if you could look, what we have going on here, all of these were the same size and they're gonna grow at different rates because you got fat chunky mofos like this and then you got the little guys like this. So what you wanna do is I would take these guys here, these monsters here, and then probably this guy too because he looks like he's fighting pretty hardcore. So I would take these guys and separate them from these guys. Everybody's eating, everybody's doing well, but eventually what's gonna happen is these guys are gonna overtake the entire enclosure. So when I was breeding these guys, in the thousands, I had rack systems set up. Boom, 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 boom. And what I would do is just constantly shift to make sure that I had the same size dragons in the same enclosures, that way we had no problems. So these guys here, it's very simple. Every single day they get clean. And because they've all been raised together, we know that if one had something, they would all have something. So it's okay to put these guys together. And then I got their little buddy in here that's been with them since I got this whole thing. And he's pretty much the same as far as care goes. So we keep him in there with them. So he'll go with the smaller bearded dragons. But I'm not gonna switch them today because I don't have the other lights that I thought I had, which I need to be able to switch them over. So they're gonna stay together today. Tomorrow I'll go get a light and we'll switch these guys. But basically, because there's so many, obviously I'm not gonna take each and every single one, set them up in an enclosure, spend a bunch of money, and then make it all nice. You can use a bunch of different things for substrate. You can use reptile bark, with their reptile bark, whatever they call it. Um, you can use the calcium sand, which I think is garbage, if you ask me. Uh, you can use clay sand. All of that stuff can cause impaction in your bearded dragons, if anybody out there is keeping bearded dragons. So basically what that means, as they eat and the stuff that they eat, they take a little bit of sand with it, take a little bit of substrate with it, and in the process of doing so, they'll get backed up and they can have a lot of problems. They can even die from getting impacted. It's basically being backed up because of that sand. Even that calcium sand is, uh, is too much if they're taking in too much at a time, especially when you put the lettuce down because these guys are on the board, so they do eat both insects, meat, and lettuce leafy material, whatever, spring mix, romaine, all that stuff is good as long as you're staying away from the iceberg because the iceberg is basically just water. So, in a nutshell, 
because these guys are omnivores, um, we make sure that they have that lettuce, and if you have lettuce on top of sand, it will stick to it, and then those lizards will get that sand in them. And even, like I said, the calcium sand, they say it's safe to eat for the animals. It is in very small amounts. It's not like the calcium I give, which I'll basically dust all the animals. You can follow me. That's what we're doing here, unless you want to just stare at a dirty pig. So, I get shit tons of it because I use a lot of it, not just for my reptiles, but for a lot of my animals, because that shit is gold. But the calcium itself, I'll use and I'll dust their food, so I'll put a little bit on the lettuce, and then I'll also put a little bit on their bugs. And for me, I like to do either the discoid roaches, if I can get to them, because you can breed colonies of those real easy. Right now I'm doing crickets, and then if I can't get to the crickets in time, I will substitute that with the mealworms. I don't like feeding mealworms often. I'll feed them on the interim. If I don't have food for that day, maybe once a week, I'll go ahead and do the mealworms because the, exo uh, the exoskeleton of the mealworms can actually do damage to these guys as well. So if they overeat, and they get impacted from the exoskeleton, you can also have a problem. So I usually stick to a different protein source. Now, for these guys, it's a very simple setup. Because we have a bunch, I'm gonna use paper towel. Paper towel for me is the easiest way, number one, to see if any of the poop looks weird. Number two, it holds just as much humidity as I want. And if you notice, you guys have already seen my reptile rooms, I have two set up, one in the garage, one in the back. Both of those are staying at about 84 degrees. I could keep these lizards in that room or in the garage. The problem is, is the humidity. If the humidity is too high with these guys here, what you'll end up having is problems with yellow fungus. And if your animal gets yellow fungus, there is no way to cure that yellow fungus. That animal has to be removed from the collection. Hopefully it doesn't spread to the rest of your collection because it will clear out an entire collection of bearded dragons. So I keep them inside the house because the AC is constantly cranking. And with that AC cranking, it does dry out the whole thing. So I'll show you what we do here. So I just have a, literally a piece of wood that I found from somewhere because this is the bargain brand way to set up a tank. We're using real cheap stuff, dude. I got a bin, so we clean them once a day. Every time we clean them, we soak them. And then we have, this is just for the Emerald Swift. Generally speaking, I will not keep water in with the Bearded Dragons. They tend not to go over there and drink from it, but the Swift might go over there and take some from it. But the water that they get, they'll get from soaking once a day. They also get it from the food they eat which is the lettuce, and then also we're gonna do what we're about to do, which is basically miss them, and we miss them twice a day. So it pumps up the humidity a little bit, but it still dries the enclosure out enough because where they come from, they're not dealing with humidity like we have down here in Florida. So that's where those problems can come in. And that yellow fungus is nasty stuff, nasty stuff. So they stay indoors, and with a ventilated tank like this, it's just a fish tank, not my favorite to use for reptiles, but again, we're dealing with what we got. And this was the cheapest route. And with this many animals and all the crap I got going on in my life right now, we're gonna go the cheapest route as long as the animals are safe. So it's completely okay for you guys to set it up the same way, if you don't mind the way it looks. So we have the regular heat bulb ready to get blinded. Boom, we got the regular heat bulb, then we also have the desert UVB, UVB bulb. Here's the secret, ladies and gentlemen. You can go to any store and get any heat light. And anything that says 100 watts is 100 watts. Anything that says 75 watts is 75 watts. It's gonna put off the same heat that any other bulb is gonna put. But if they slap a bearded dragon sticker on it, it'll cost you about an extra $10, maybe 15 bucks, sometimes 25 bucks if you're at the right pet store. And you're basically paying for a reptile specific bulb. The heat bulb is just to produce heat, that's it. So if I buy 100 watt from Home Depot for 70 cents and 100 watt from Petco for 25 bucks, they're gonna do the same exact thing. The only thing that you have to pay attention to is your UVB bulb. And the reason being is that that UVB 
is something that these lizards especially need because unlike your snakes and your big monitors that are eating rodents that get their calcium from the bones and then the D3 from the organs and all that stuff, these guys don't get that. That's why we supplement them with calcium. The calcium we use is the pink label. It does, it's the Reptical, I think, Reptical pink label. It does have vitamin D3 in it, but the UVB also gives them their vitamin D3. And basically what that does is allows the animal to metabolize the calcium and use it in the proper way. So without the UVB or without vitamin D3, the body's not going to process the calcium the way that it needs to, and you can run to problems that way. I get a UVB and I get a 10.0. A 10.0 they say is for desert animals. You have 2.0, 5.0, and it goes all the way up to 10.0, and they'll tell you it's for desert, jungle, or whatever. Essentially what it means is two, five, and 10 basically means how far down that your UVB is gonna reach. So a 10.0 bulb, you're only getting good UVB for about 12 inches. So right where they're sitting, where they usually sit right up against the heat, it's gonna be about 110 degrees, which is exactly what we want. And then because we're inside, if you go all the way to the other side, it's gonna be about 75 degrees. So they can go in and out of the heat as they choose. It's a dry area. And then, like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these guys. Can you give me some lettuce for me? So we're gonna mess these guys down. Even though I just soaked them, I'll mess them anyway. Because when I feed, it also helps because that paper towel is gonna to get glued to the bottom. So if I put crickets in there, and the crickets aren't gonna go underneath the paper towels. I don't have to worry about that. And also, you wanna miss your lizards twice a day, especially in the AC like this. So I'll go around on the whole cage. I'll soak this whole thing. And I'll hit these guys pretty good. And as you can see, they do enjoy their mystic. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, little munchkins. The top a little bit, get the droplets off, light goes back on. I keep that thing dialed in pretty far to the top because most of them will stay right there. Then you put the lettuce in lower. You get just drop it. It's good. There you go. All right, so they've already eaten today. They'll start picking at that lettuce, and then after I'm done with this, I'm gonna throw another round of crickets in because I do feed them twice a day. That just keeps them from picking at each other. So I haven't had any foot losses. I haven't had any tail nets. None of that's going on. And if you want it that way, that's the way you got to do it. So now that we're wrapped up with all of this nonsense, we're going to get into something else. But before we do, let me show you guys a couple of things. So we've been working endlessly every single day to try and get things set up in a manner that we can manage this stuff. When I say we, it's me, everybody's gone. Carrie's out there working at the vet place. Madison's up in Oklahoma for the next month or so. So when she returns, she'll help me out. But right now it's just me. What are you doing, Icebox? This is Ice Cube because he's a tegu and apparently he's I guess an ice tag you or something like that. But this guy, I'll throw up pictures of him right now. And we're back. Yeah, so he looked like shit when I first got this guy in. He was not doing well. What are you doing, bud? So because he is an albino of some sort, uh, he's blind as shit. I'm not gonna say super blind, but he definitely, definitely ain't super all there. Let me get a piece of fruit for him. Show you guys something interesting real quick. All right, so you saw the picture of this guy. He looks really rough. Like I would say 90% of this stuff. I thought he was gonna be dead the next morning. So he came in the cup, his eyes were already sagging in, which is 100% for me, a sign of there is no, there is no coming back from that. Um, so I immediately shoved a half a pinky in his mouth and he started to chomp on it. I thought he was gonna eat it. I put him back in the, in the container and I put him in the, in the dark so that he could sit there by himself. I came back an hour later and that's the picture you just saw. After an hour later, he was basically sagged down. He still had the thing in his mouth. 
I moved them into the only enclosure I had at the time. I put a bunch of heat on him. He still sat there the whole night with the thing in his mouth. I came in in the middle of the night and I thought he was dead because he still had it in his mouth and he was basically to the side, leaned on the floor and uh, he wasn't, he was still alive. And then I be- Action. I'm gonna make a video smashing the shit out of this iPhone. I'm gonna pull the old Gallagher and I'm gonna pull out a damn sledgehammer. I'm gonna smash this thing. It sucks. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Alright, I don't even know what I was saying. But the damn lizard was gonna die in a nutshell. The thing was gonna die. So I babied it. Now it's not gonna die. You see, before Apple cuts me off again. Jesus. Alright, so I basically babied the hell out of this little guy. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, bud. Because, watch, watch out. This mofo blind as hell. And something interesting about the tape is, watch, he's gonna start chomping on fingers and stuff. He's not gonna be able to figure it out. That's my finger. That's my finger. That's my finger. Find the fruit, find the fruit. Find, there you go, bud. Mm -hmm. So something interesting about, did you just spit that out, dude? What the fuck, dude? It's not, a, it's not a living thing, bro. You don't have to thrash it. So, the interesting thing about the tegus is that they are omnivorous. Believe that or not, they are 100% omnivorous. So they will eat fruits and vegetables. Are you going to do it again? Now this is like too mushy. Go ahead, bud, you blind boy. So they will eat fruits and vegetables, and they also will eat meat. But I've already fed him some meat today, and he's big and chunky. So this was just basically for the video. But you can see the things that these genetics kind of create. So I'm not going to say genetics don't happen in the wild. They do. But when we fuss with things too much as people, that's a finger, bud. Then they start to get little ticks. Let's say that. Like this guy right here, definitely his vision is not that solid. So if I throw some crickets in here, I can. it's fun to watch because he'll sit here and chase around things that are moving and never catch anything at all. You want any more? You done on that? Did you not like that one? Go ahead, bud. Go ahead, dear bud. Go ahead. You wanna take it? I can't shove it in your mouth fast enough. You keep grabbing a finger, bud. All right. You know what? You're good anyway. You're good. All right. But basically, I just wanted to show you. We'll do a whole episode on that guy right there and the deal with that. And the extremely invasive. Thank you. But um, yeah, felt super bad for that guy. Super happy that he made him come around. There's another one too. Well, all these guys here. What is this here? Uh, are these guys even out? Oh, check on my little homie here. Look at that right there. Cue that I always feel like somebody's watching me music right now. Little Chinese soft shell turtles back there. Looks like my filter needs to be kicked up a notch. Doesn't look like it's doing the job that I want it to do. But we'll do those in another episode too. But uh, those are actually mine. I actually got those. Um, so that, 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 those two belong to me. Um, so we got these guys too, which are absolutely gorgeous actually this one's in shed full shed and you can see the front of that starting to pop off and he's going to actually eat that shed and he'll take it off his own body and eat the whole shed and it gives them a little bit of extra calcium too but i also leave them a dish with calcium and they this species in general will actually go over there and they will lick that calcium up if they need it and i'll show you like it's basically the same thing over and over again, so we're not gonna pop every single bin. But I'll show you my special little homie. That's not him yeah, at all. I mean, it is, but it's not the one I'm talking about. So I'll show you two things here that are really cool. So this little homie right here, check that out. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a picture of this guy when I first got him in right now oh dudes edit edit okay so i fouled up um i'll explain here in a second so the video you're, you're gonna see two videos so what i wanted to show you was not the right gecko 
So uh, the gecko that you're seeing now still was in pretty rough shape and this is gonna be probably a little bit difficult to see. This is the conditions these things came in. And then that specific gecko that you just saw on the footage before I so rudely interrupted. Um, was this guy, no, 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 I was gonna do it again. Was this guy right here who was above the one that I actually wanted to show you, but I wanted to show you something cool. So I'm gonna show you the video of that one that you just saw right now. Look at this, there's a rescue, we just got it. Angriest gecko I've ever seen in my life. Never even seen him do that. And now, I'm gonna show you that same gecko right here. So, definitely put on a little bit of weight. It's not as bad as the one that I am about to show you because that one was way worse off. This one wasn't much better as far as things go. But as you can see, the dude has totally chilled out. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even know the leopard geckos could do that. I had never seen him do that before. I'd never seen, uh, <clears throat> seen him scream like that uh, in any way, shape, or form. And dude, I used to keep these things when I was a young, young kid. So I've always been around the leopard geckos for a long, long, long time. Never have I seen it. They're generally very relaxed, like little puppy dogs, just like this little guy right here. Super, super cute, very chill. And he has definitely chilled out. He's putting on some weight like the rest of his homies in there. Looking gorgeous, looking good, happy and healthy. But let's get on to brass tacks here because what I really wanted to show you was, and we could go through all the pictures and soon I'm gonna do like, I'm gonna try and do like a breakdown. We'll tour the geckos, then we'll tour the pythons, then we'll tour some of the colubrids and we'll keep going episode by episode to try and get through all this. And I'll explain what I'm doing with each particular species and try and break down to the best of my ability um, the care and husbandry that goes into keeping these animals to help anybody out there that has this specific species or any of these species I try and help out as much as I can super slam super busy this is a lot of stuff it's a lot of work um, it's late right now <laughs> I'll interrupt again I'll show you a video right now that I took for Instagram but this is this has been my life as of the last couple of months, right here. All right, so Alexa, what time is it? The time is 1.04 a.m. 1.04 a.m.? Alexa, what time is it? It's 1.04 a.m. Oh, shit. Yeah, all right, ladies and gentlemen, dudes and dudettes, so it's 1.04 a.m. And uh, we just finished feeding these racks. Now we gotta do these guys over here and the king snakes in this one right here. So, tired of shit. But this is how we crank this shit out. Don't really have a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we do every single day. But back to, back to what we're talking about. This is the gecko that I wanted to show you. All right, so we're rehabbing like, well, I say we, I am rehabbing like 700 animals um, that we're gonna be working on for quite some time. And I'll show you guys, but this little guy right here is not doing well at all, so. We're gonna pay extra special attention to this little homie. He is eating, he just ate. That's why he's moving his head like that. He's swallowing a cricket. So I think he'll do just fine, but clearly he looks, or she, I should say, looks like shit. So we're gonna beat this fool up. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see if we can get another cricket here. Sometimes, dude. Sometimes, 
just a little bit of extra tension and a little bit of TLC goes a phenomenally long way. And that goes with anything. Whatever you put in, you're gonna get out. Boom. Look at his cute little face. Look at that face. He's skinny. All right, so let me see if I can get a good view. Uh, let me use the light over here. You're gonna see a shop vac, sorry dudes. All right, so check this guy out. He's absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure what the morph is. For anybody that's interested in the morphs, I'll find out when we go through and do an actual episode on the geckos themselves. And I'll let you know exactly what morph it is for anybody that's interested in that, because I'm sure a lot of people are. And just because it's not my cup of tea does not mean it's not everybody else's cup of tea. So we'll get into that so we can please you guys as well. Because I care about you and I want you to know. And I kind of want to know too. I'm getting more interested in this as uh, time goes on because I was never really the genetic guy. But it's becoming much more interesting as time goes on. I just, I'm watching things, I'm learning things, I'm seeing things that I haven't seen, or seen, oh my God, I can't speak, I'm sorry guys. Um, I'm seeing things that I haven't seen before. Uh, it's interesting to watch how all this is played out and watch how different genetics uh, affect different things in different ways, so that's pretty cool. We'll get into that later on. Let's get back to the video, boom. And now we have this. So after a few weeks, and some good food, proper environment, proper temps. These guys are really starting to come around. And it's all leopard geckos in here, except for one big mama, this lady right here. And this is actually really cool too. I don't know what the morphs are, ladies and gentlemen. Don't beat me up in the comments, please. I'm not a morph guy. I do know what the species is, but I couldn't tell you what the morphs are. But today, I was cleaning them out and I was setting some stuff up and I realized something with this little girl. So this is most definitely a female. This is an African fat tail gecko. It's uh, it's definitely within the same family as the leopard geckos. Obviously it looks very similar, but something really cool about this one is when I looked at her today, I noticed that she was a little bit chunky, but if you can look, you can see she's a little bit chunky right towards the back end. So let me see if I can get it good visual here so if you look right there right by her leg it's poking out a bit so i just because i've done all this before and bred all of these guys before i felt like she was pregnant i'm not gonna say pregnant that's not the proper way to say it gravid is what we call it when we have egg layers and she is so if you look i don't want to stress her out too much you're gonna have to come over here but with these guys you can actually see eggs in there. Here, little munchkin. Let me try and do this without stressing her out. So I flipped her over because she looked like she was gravid, which I don't know if she was with a male or not before she got to me. It's possible. It's also possible she's just going to throw some infertile eggs. We'll find out. But yeah, you see those two little white patches when she walks? So you'll see the dark in the middle. Let me see if I can get her to crawl up real quick. You'll see the dark in the middle. And then you'll see the two whites on either side. And those are little eggs forming. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna build her a nest box because I just caught that today. And we'll probably have some eggs here. I would guess probably within the next week, maybe two, we'll have a fresh set of eggs and we'll find out if they're fertile or not. And then I'll teach you guys how to find out if your eggs are fertile or not. The only thing left that I need is one more rack to get these guys set up. But quite frankly, these tubs are a little bit small for my liking. It works perfectly fine. The animals are perfectly safe and they're not going to stay here for long. So I don't mind it. But all the stuff in here is just a little bit too big for those bins. So I'm going to get a bigger rack for these guys over here. And remember, everybody here got fed today. So please excuse me if I'm not my normal chipper, uh, sarcastic self. It's been a long couple of days. And I try to say this to basically point everybody in the opposite direction of what I'm doing here. So it's very hypocritical for me to say, if you're gonna do this, do it responsibly. I'll say that. If you're gonna be breeding animals, if you're gonna be keeping a mass collection, then you have to understand that it, it's not a joke. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, I go to sleep at one o'clock in the morning, I get four hours of sleep and I do it over and over and over and over and over. 
the at best, like I said, maybe I'll get to go surf for a few hours and that's about it. But as far as family gatherings, things to do, vacation, all that stuff, you can cut that out because it doesn't happen. Everything here needs to be taken care of on a daily basis. So every day, every single animal that I have in this house gets checked on. Every single animal that I have in this house gets spot cleaned. And then twice a week, we do a deep clean, which basically means like, for these guys here, they just got fed, so I'm gonna be gentle. So basically, like he's got poop in there, I would basically take this whole section and clear it out and then take all the bedding out, do the chlorohexidine, put the bedding that I can use back into it and then put some new bedding into it. And then after that, I make sure that I mark down when I started so I know that every month I'm gonna empty that aspen regardless of what it looks like. So obviously, if you walk in and your stuff is spilled, which it shouldn't be because these cups are 16 ounce cups, so what they'll do is even if they go to tip them, it hits the top so it can't tip, so I don't have any spillage. But regardless of anything, if I walk in and the aspen is destroyed, I'm gonna change out that aspen no matter what. Even if it's been two days, it's not worth it to keep the aspen then and damage your animal just change the aspen out but if the aspen's good you can keep using it but no matter what after a month i'll change it because you can harbor bacteria you can harbor parasites all that good stuff but the biggest thing for me like i said in the other episode is to make sure that everything is clean and it's not just the snakes themselves your area has to be clean as well so we're constantly sweeping mopping doing and then we're moving cages we're cleaning behind stuff so that we don't have dust build up we don't have things build up we go inside the rack so we take these out we wipe down the tops and bottoms of the rack space because even like you can see now we're getting dust we're getting stuff that builds up and this is just after a couple of days but tomorrow is deep clean day. So spot clean day on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday we feed, and then Friday we do a deep clean. But when you do that, you have to clean inside your racks, not just the bins. A lot of people don't pay attention to that. So you'll get to a collection, it looks beautiful, and then it'll be covered with dirt and dust. And if you do that, not necessarily gonna affect your animals in the short term, but in the long term, you can get a lot of issues. So the biggest thing that I'm trying to point out, ladies and gentlemen, is you have to be as clean as you possibly can. Sanitation is the biggest thing for animal husbandry. A lot of people skip certain steps that will lead you in a deep, dark path because you'll start having small problems. Those small problems turn into bigger problems and you'll be dealing with what we're about to deal with in the back room, which is basically deworming an entire collection, which didn't come from this, it came when they got here, and I think it was the Transpecos rat snakes that I had that carried those in here. Now, it could just be that particular species carrying those worms, but whatever is in that room is gonna get treated just because of the close proximity that everything is at. All right, dudes and dudettes, we are gonna cut it right there. I'm gonna two-part this episode. It was a longer episode, so then Part two of this is gonna be in the colubrid room back there. So uh, it's a little bit more of the same stuff we were going through. It's basically what you wanna to do to maintain your collection, your mass collection, all that good stuff. And then we go through a couple of the snakes back there. So we'll show you a couple of things, uh, a couple of the interesting stuff, some of my favorite stuff in that room. And then it goes on to basically help you guys out with more of your own collections. So I appreciate you guys watching. You guys have been awesome. Keep commenting. Uh, I think I'm slowly learning how to reply. Actually, it's a lie. But Gabby from uh, Florida's Wildest and, um, and Tyler from Tyler Nolan Tattoo and Chandler from Chandler's Wildlife. You guys go check out their pages if you're not already. I'm sure all of you came from one of those pages or another. But all of those guys are going to help me out to try and figure out how to reply to the comments after you guys wait no hold on how do i say that to reply to your replies that's right yeah because i've been having issues with uh with trying to figure out how to track down when you guys reply to me so that i can carry on a full thread uh full conversation because i do appreciate your comments and uh, i do comment to everybody that i possibly can i read every single one uh, so keep on doing that hit the like button subscribe button all that good stuff share it with your friends tell your grandma Love the grandmas out there. I actually had a grandma on the Instagram the other day that pointed out that she was a grandma and she was watching. So love that. <laughs> so keep that coming. Tell your grandmas. Apparently they like this stuff. Everybody wants to learn. But I think this is going to be a fun little journey now that I've kind of 
settle into what we got going on and, and kind of figured out how I'm going to roll this out, um, even as far as the YouTube stuff and then balancing that between getting my other homies back home, which by the way, for an update on that, we're building some enclosures. I should have those guys here within the next, hopefully within the next days to uh, a week, uh, hopefully not longer than two. So I'll have the homies back at the house. That's gonna be a fantastic reunion. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out. You guys are awesome. So keep doing what you're doing. I'll keep doing what I'm doing and I'll catch you on the next one. Okay. Look, they can never keep me down, I'm going And if I ever fail the snow, I'll go again I never quit, cause I know that every loss May lead to another win, I'm going up I, I bet when I land, they gon' tell me it's luck again See that I'm winning, it's harder to watch I'm setting the stage, you should give me my prize You ain't got a soul, you lacking the spirit You talk out your neck, I'ma show you I'm with it I've been really hate for you to sit and watch me win again And win again and win again I know it's probably getting on me and when I'm sending them So if I ever win again, it's nobody the minimum I didn't have to sell my soul Oh, yeah. Please don't play no games with me no, no.